Uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. We're um we're we're into uh we're we're continuing through the the kind of the mission sermon. So um last week we had really really good conversation, which is why the session was quite long. Um, we're we're looking at quite a tough passage today. Um, and um, there is almost a requirement as we as we think about the passage we're going to look at. Um, even the words Jesus fits in um, to a conversation which has an immediate context he is sending the 12 out in a new missions spree and he's in in the verses we looked at last week we we saw Jesus kind of um, giving them instructions for the immediate and as we move on to the verses we're looking at now he starts to stretch out their perspective so he's framed what they need to do in the immediate as being just for the children of Israel not the Samaritans yes they've ministered with Samaritans before but in this in this current context, you're just going to to the the lost tribe, the lost children of of Israel, Judea and Galilee. Don't go to the Samaritans. Don't go to the Gentiles. Leave all of those things. But as the verses, as we get into them today, start to push their perspective, and Jesus starts to instill in his disciples an understanding, which kind of looks quite hard. Um, but actually, as we look at it, we see um, something incredibly profound, which really kind of captures. Um, something for all ages um just we were discussing as we're coming in it the kind of the the realms of conflict and so on are a real experience of human humanity and human history and we have to live in those in those kind of worlds um so i've um i i've i've called the today's session which starts in verse 16 of, of matthew 10 um shrewd as snakes and we know the the full phrase is shrewd as snakes um as straightforward as the way i've translated it or as innocent as doves and um and we we're kind of comfortable with the idea of our christian faith having a, a kind of a virtue to it which is an innocence um sadly i often find if you like the 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 first part here this being as shrewd as snakes <laughs> it's not being evil as snakes it's it's actually kind of being wily and thinking about it and um and just as we were kind of coming in ready to to get into this session we were I was flagging the the raising of the the concept of the sons of Issachar on Sunday at church, and um, which was the um, we, and the, the thing with the sons of Issachar is they understood the times and therefore could advise you how to behave. And actually, we live in a complex world with lots of different layers, which at the moment Christians need real wisdom to know how to behave. Um, so we we kind of rely on a sort of an innocence, the innocence of doves, but unfortunately, sometimes that gets abused. Um, and so there is a, a need to have this shrewdness at the same time. So if we if we kind of um, if we start to kind of pick up the verses, we're, we're going to do about um, so we're doing sixteen to twenty three. So we're we're doing just um, seven verses today. <laughs> um, so so look, says Jesus continues as he as he's speaking. Look, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and as straightforward as doves. <laughs> Um, and be aware of people, because they will give you up to their councils, who then flog you in their synagogues. And um, and there is um there is a need. That there is a, there's an interesting in anything where you have a complex, huge amount of information. Um, there are different ways of looking at stuff, um, and depending on the level at which you look at it, you can see things slightly differently. Um, and, and I'm going to touch on this because you're going to see that, that Jesus is preparing his disciples for the fact that at the heart of the gospel message, which as they've got hold of it, they're enthusiastic about and they want to take it. And, and it's so good. Why would nobody accept this? Why would somebody not want the good news we're giving them? Um, but actually, there's something in there that, that comes right into conflict um, with the, the, the kind of the, the very... Um, philosophical driver of what we think of as sin um, a word which we don't like to use too often because we don't want to call people sinners we want to see them as people who can be redeemed by Jesus and so on and we don't want to box them in so all of those things but there, there is a reality um, and you know I remember as a as a child um, it doesn't sound like this is in the passage but it's kind of there we'll get there <laughs> remember as a child you know you used to go to kind of Sunday school type things you used to get taught you know sin's got I in the middle <laughs> Um, and, and actually, there is something at the very heart of everything that that expresses what we think of as sinful, which is which elevates my perspective um, into the place and to take the place of God's perspective. 
And so the the eye is always there. It's just it's that that is it's kind of it's universal. It's it's what 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 it's what really makes it like that. So the that simple little eyes in the middle of sin, you know, is a very profound statement in English. It, it actually kind of captures something, uh, and and we're going to see how that kind of comes into to conflict as Jesus goes on here. So he's saying you you need to start to understand if you like the real level at which the battle is going on. Um, if we don't, we tend to start to see our faith and we see the Father God we have who is so good to us, who blesses us with every good thing. And so so kind of God starts in our, our narrative to become sort of like a cosmic Santa. You know, he's he's always there for the gift. <laughs> but the, but actually, we, we miss the fact that actually, as you stretch your perspective, you might see something that looks good when you've got a short perspective as good. As you look a bit further, it's not so good. And so for a very kind of simple situation, you know, a parent um, says to their child, no, you can't eat another five marshmallows <laughs> because you've already had two. Now, marshmallows might seem wonderful in the moment for the kid until they've eaten the extra five and end up throwing up. Um, and now they're so hyper and buzzing that they're, they're flipping all over the place and then do themselves an injury. There is a perspective you can have as a parent on life which is which stretches beyond the immediacy and and suddenly you see now no actually having an extra marshmallow is not a good thing it's a bad thing and and so there that's a kind of a constant thing there is always a, a, a always a way of looking at things from a higher and higher level and and uh, and real goodness somehow balances the two you don't want to have such a high level view that actually you, you end up oppressing the individual. But at the same time, sometimes you, for the sake of the individual, you have to take a bigger p perspective to understand what's good for them. Um, and, and some of that, of course, is going to be a part of the message. It's going to ask us in some way or other to, to take up our cross in following Jesus. Taking up our cross in terms of following Jesus um, means... Uh, actually things that are uncomfortable and I don't really want to do in the immediate <laughs> and and sometimes I can understand why but sometimes following Jesus means I have to do things that I can't see far enough ahead to see why that's good if that, if that makes sense now that that's a very abstract way it's not it's not here in the verses you know this is a bible study not a theological study so so I need to kind of keep focus but there's something about that idea of the shrewdness of a snake but but actually then the flip side is in terms of the way we behave towards people, try and be as straightforward as doves. And we often see it translated as innocent. The idea is of being not mixed up. <laughs> it's not all so kind of cleverly woven together that you can't actually see what's, what the simple strands are. Um, and so we, we come into, if I, if I describe it like this, if we come into a discussion on what's going on in, in politics in the world today. Um, and, and actually, we we have very mixed up agendas because we will often kind of express something, but actually there are it's made up of ten different kind of threads to it. <laughs> um, and so what's now happening is we're presenting our shrewdness um, when we should be presenting our simplicity. Um, I, I'll give you a really trivial example. You know, I I, I kind of um, I, I work with folks in in a developmental kind of coaching sort of way outside of the Christian church. Um, as well as inside <laughs> and often as we kind of try and tease out and understand different perspectives and so on I would say you know part of being able to understand and work with people with different perspectives is you sometimes you need to be honest about your own biases but that's not always very popular because if you if you express that you say actually I'm biased this way probably because um, so so actually <laughs> if I if I give you something kind of simple um, I, I suspect the majority of my friends don't like the the idea of of kind of um, standardized testing for 11 year olds because they think it's it's bad if an 11 year old is being judged and put in a category that affects their life going forwards. I totally understand that perspective. My own experience was my school thought I was educationally subnormal until I took the 11 plus test and I got the highest mark in the school. So I can see the benefits on that side. And and so so I can if we're talking about those things, I, I want to delineate my motives. So this is why I understand things this way, if that makes sense. Um, so so our, our straightforwardness is we having an integrity and an openness and ability to understand ourselves, because otherwise we just get a bit sophisticated and we're trying to kind of manoeuvre people and manipulate them, which goes on all the time. I've got this agenda, but I'll pretend I haven't got it and I'll tell you why you should do this, that, that sort of approach. But we can still understand the world that way. We can see what's going on. 
Um, I always love the fact that it says of Jesus in John's gospel that he knew from the beginning who would betray him. And it doesn't say that he knew, Jesus knew from the beginning of all time. You know, that's the way some people read it. <laughs> it. It says it at a context where some people are falling out with Jesus's message. So it seems to me as Jesus is working with his disciples, he notices what's getting into Judas's heart. He notices that Judas is beginning to feel uncomfortable with where his message is taking him. Um, but Jesus doesn't do anything really with it for a year. Um, and even on uh, at the Last Supper, um, he's constantly in a place of kind of appealing to something in Judas to try and draw him back. Um, and so, so there's a kind of a sense in which you see that model in Jesus. He's being as shrewd as a snake. He can see what's going on, <laughs> but he's also being straightforward. He's, he's not trying to um, uh, kind of manipulate Judas by being clever about it. He, he kind of just gives him the opportunities, gives him the possibilities. And so this is something of the, the context of how we how we do our, um, our mission, our evangelism. And then Jesus says, so be beware of people because they will give you up to their councils um, who then will flog you in their synagogues. Um, sometimes you'll just see and flog you in their synagogues. Um, it, it's true that, that um, just to kind of go into the text, that the word there is just simply and, but, but in Greek it can kind of have a compound sense. In, in other words, it can take you to the next stage. So I've chosen to kind of make it a little bit more explicit by adding the italics. I've just added the who then. So, because actually you, you see this um, all the time in terms of the way politics works out. And I don't mean politics necessarily at the national level. I mean, in your office level, in your in wherever you work, your hospitals, your schools, your, <laughs> the kind of interpersonal politics is very often there's something in an individual that finds it easier to give you up to somebody else. And that, that thing that they give you up to does something quite extreme. And, and neither party then feels totally responsible, if that if that makes sense. <laughs> The person who kind of gives you up, passes you on to the authorities. Well, I just did what I needed to do. That was me being having integrity. But actually, I know that when I do, suddenly they then take it further. And they have no they have no emotional context with you. And so they do something extreme. They flog you. Um, and, 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 and it's a very real dynamic. Um, you know, in in these in these last few weeks, you know, I um, just e even with uh, you know in conversations with people, they coming back to, for instance, the um, soldier Nitzan's book, the, the Gulag Archipelago. You know, we think about that the line of good and evil run through the heart of every man. That actually part of that that testimony is that 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 actually good people ha do the small step that hands you over to the system that actually does something extreme. And that is a very real thing that people do. Even people that are good and you feel you want to trust will find it easier to kind of hand you over to something that then hasn't got the connection. And so there's this strange warning as, as everything else that Jesus said up to this point about going out and doing missions. It's fantastic. Um, look, Well, I say it's fantastic. You know, there, there was the shaking the dust off as we saw last week. But, you know, you're going to go and you're going to pray for the sick and you're going to re release them from the demonic and you're going to do these wonderful things and you're going to lodge with a person whose peace is on them and and so on but now also but you've got to be realistic about the context you're in there is something conflicting coming <laughs> and and that conflict can be done by steps um, you can get handed over to one person it can go to here go to here to here and that that chain of events um, requires every step to be in place but each step I can absolve myself of the full responsibility because I'm not the one that did the ultimate thing. If that if that makes sense. Um, and so you can you've got good people who the Lord really wants to redeem, all doing their small thing, their small selfishness, their small their, their small failure. But the big the, the little failures all add up to something that becomes quite catastrophic. Um, so, so Jesus actually takes it on and now he starts to lift his disciples' eyes beyond just their immediate mission, which is to, into the tribes of Judea and Galilee or the, the towns of Judea and Galilee. Because he says you will be before before governors. So it's no longer just now the, the, the synagogue and the councils. That's a very Jewish thing. You're also going to be before, before governors and kings on my account as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. So you see right in this first sermon where, where Jesus is giving instructions or wisdom for how to conduct the pushing out of this message. Although we've started in Jerusalem, Judea, amongst the, those of, of Israel, we're going to be pressing out now into the, 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 the um, authority of the Gentiles. You're going to come before governors. They're not Jewish. 
and kings, not just, well, in fact, um, Judea doesn't have a king at the moment. It does actually have a governor, but he's a Gentile governor. You're going to start to become a testimony beyond just those who you're comfortable with. Um, and so he goes, so when they deliver up you, you up, okay, here's the, the first piece of advice, <laughs> it is don't be anxious about how or what you should say, um, because in that hour it will be given you what to say. Uh, and and that in many ways, um, Jesus saves us from, if you like, um, you look at the evil empires or you look at evil oppressive systems. And and, and we often, for very good reasons, we, we want to think of a, a political way to kind of change something. But that's not the same as the way the kingdom goes out. So I'm not saying, therefore, you shouldn't do it, but just recognize that, that you know, as Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. There is a there's an element that happens happens or operates at a different level to if you like the purely the political so if we were planning it and thinking about it we in, in almost by definition we're trying to do it the political way <laughs> um, but actually if we're not so much worried about that we are wanting to bring witness and testimony um, to Jesus then actually the, the freedom is don't get too anxious and don't worry too much about it um, because it's not always about the cleverness or the wisdom of what you say. Sometimes it's something about the sort of almost the spiritual integrity of the affirmation um, that actually, despite all that you are saying to me, despite all you are doing, Jesus is still good. Um, and I always remember from in growing up a, a testimony of a situation in the local council in the area where there was a, um, a uh, there was a, a huge amount of politics being played um, with a child, ten-year-old child, and and there were council work. There, there were there were um, social workers, you know, who loved the kids, who wanted to put him out on the streets so that they could make a point to the papers and and get political leverage against the government that was in place at the time. They 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 so so I the, this Christian guy I was known was in this conversation where where the where the people who are supposed to care for the child wanted to put them out so that they could make a point about the policy if that makes sense mm -hmm. and and he felt in the end the only thing he could say he tried every argument and wasn't winning and just in the end he just said this is wrong I am um, as a believer and um, Jesus is not happy with this of course he got laughed at and so on but there was a power in that in that kind of statement i won't go into the, the story but it, but there was some almost invisibly or not invisibly almost that it, if you looked at it other than with spiritual eyes you wouldn't see how it all connects but somehow his stand created a kind of a, a friction that actually ended up to the whole thing being exposed in the national press um now i'm sure every lots of people would have those kind of testimonies but there's something about you know sometimes we can't plan the words we just need to speak the truth um, and and so so Jesus actually in one sense is 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 um, endorsing his followers to understand you can't you can't find it by being anxious about it <laughs> you're not going to find the wisdom being anxious about it in the end you've got to be there um, to give your testimony to bring your witness as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles because it won't be you speaking but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you and um and 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 this isn't something to strive for um, it's the way I understand it anyway. I love that verse um, that, that that God says to Jeremiah when he calls him, and Jeremiah says, "I'm only a kid, I can't do this," and and um, and the Lord says to him, "I'll watch over my word to perform it." And it's almost a kind of a thing of stop, stop, ang stop fretting about it. Just you go and speak, and somehow I'll take whatever you say and I'll make it work. <laughs> Is the sum of of what the Lord says, and I kind of think you get a, a sense of that in in these verses. Um, so I I doubt that if you like, the full scope of what Jesus is, is potentially talking about here happened in that first mission trip when the 12 went out. You know, some bits in the local, but he's he's preparing them long term and captured it for us by Matthew, something that actually over the, the millennia, the two millennia, has been incredibly relevant for how we progress and take the gospel into new new fields and new locations. Um. So it'd be the, the the father speaking through you, and um, and he goes on, and brother will deliver up brother to death, and father child, and children will rise up against parents, and will put them to death, and it it seems like an extreme statement, and and as I say, uh, we don't read about it specifically in in the book of Acts or in the Gospels of that kind of thing happening, but in the bigger missionary picture, in the bigger picture of the world. 
Um, it's quite common. It certainly happens as the, as the gospel goes out into the Roman Empire. Um, and there is a there is a kind of a logical reason to it. As you, if you look at things at a at a, at a kind of a, a higher philosophical clash level, um, as to why it is that this 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 happen this thing keeps on happening, and um, I, I won't try and be too 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 deep or clever about it. But there's this um, at, at, the, at the heart of it, um, the the only ground of authority if you've got rid of God. So if you get rid of God. Where does authority come from? Well, it comes from community, and community starts with family. Um, so, so actually, the nation state now at the big level becomes kind of your equivalent to God. If you've got rid of God, then where does morality come from? Well, it's the the laws of the state. It's the state who impose them. So, so actually, if you like, the concept of God is replaced by a concept of state. But that idea of state is, if you like, the structured community which starts with family. We, we understand when I'm born as a child into a family um, that somehow or other I, I instinctively know my parents have more authority than I do and I have to do what they say. And if they say, don't lick the electrical plug, um, I don't, you know, and that's a good thing. So I don't electrocute myself. <laughs> um, so I, I learn to accept their rules. Um, and, and as you extrapolate that up, um, if you don't go to God the Father and see humanity as a family, you end up in just... Um, that the, the, the state becomes the equivalent at that point and so you you find the two things one is that the state a state that is has lost and forgotten who god is as solzhenitsyn points out the problem is he says i couldn't put it any better than that men forgot god and so then you get the kind of the totalitarianism of of the um the communist state that and the gulags and so on if this if, if men forget god i.e they've gone a different way you end up just with the state and that state brings all of its power to bear, but but because actually the demonic is not a positive thing, or the well that's not a positive thing, it ends up kind of um, unraveling, and that unraveling is often hit for it right at the heart because uh, the state sees the family just as it sees um, faith, <laughs> it sees faith in in a creative good God as being a challenge. So at the at the low level, the, where it started was family, at the high level. The, the high level equivalent is actually the place of faith, <laughs> uh, faith in monotheism, f faith in one God, an exclusive God um, who has a claim on every human heart. And so it, it battles in both directions. <laughs> and so you often find and time and time again, you find um, where, where, where God has been forgotten, the, the, the state solidifies as the authority structure. And the state both fights against those that want to actually find their life under God, but it also fights against that that structure, which is what it was built on in the first place, which is family. Um, and so, time and time again, in totalitarian systems, you find that you know, like in Cambodia's killing fields, that actually it's a it's part of turning um, father and uh, children against parents. And so, actually, it becomes a rite of passage to execute the the generation above you. Um, without being too un unpleasant but these things actually happen in history um, you find it in the critical theories of the modern west so the modern west as we teach them in universities if you go and read the the, the kind of the, the the proponents of the philosophies you will find that actually there needs to be a disruption constantly against the generation before which often therefore there is an encouragement to reject parents <laughs> so you suddenly start to understand why it was that god puts it in there about honouring your father and mother, not because they're perfect, but because actually the undermining of that relationship is part of the same thing that is deliberately forgetting who God is. Um, so as a result, you're going to be hated by all sorts on my account. We don't always understand why it is, but actually there's something about who you are as you try to take this message that you find is not going to be liked, even though, as Jesus puts it in the Sermon on the Mount, you do your good deeds so that people glorify the Lord, but then they persecute you at the same time. And we get this strange kind of uh, this mix. Uh, and part of that persecution is because actually you have a sense of why you should behave, which is, is not shared either by the big picture or by the personal picture. In the end, um, right the way through this system, you've got the um, the I, the sense of I, the I in sin, putting myself in the position of God to be able to see the big picture. But we can't, whether we're an individual or whether we're a collective, we can't see the picture the way the Lord does. 
Um, but we put it into that place and eventually it, it, it crumbles at both levels. But but actually, as you as you try to confront it kindly, not 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 like a serpent, but like a dove, you try and confront it, but you see it for what it is. <laughs> you see the kind of the the, the hierarchy in the mix uh, for uh, for if you like um, to say it in the kindest way. It is man's best attempt at trying to build a stable system without God. Um, and 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 even those who don't realize what they're doing, fundamentally, that's part of what it's about. Um, and you see at that level, you understand that even people in church can get sucked into this and think this is the way. But in the end, it isn't. <laughs> um, it, 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 it is a it actually requires the transformation that happens in the human heart out of the relationship with the father God. Um, as I said, we've we've gone a bit more theological than than Bible studies today. But anyway, <laughs> so whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. Truly, I'm going to say to you, you're never going to have gotten through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. Um, it's it's almost a depressing statement, but it it reminds us that that we can never uh, um, that the ideology that says that all bad behaviour is simply because of a bad society. Therefore, if we can fix society, all bad behaviour will disappear because fundamentally people are good. That's just not true. <laughs> Fundamentally, um, people will end up being selfish. Um, and they may think their selfishness doesn't matter, but you aggregate it up and actually it comes into conflict, the conflict of who's in the who's in the God position in the way you see the world. So th- those are the, the verses we've we've looked at. And, th- and in many ways, they, they seem kind of like they're they're quite extreme when we're just talking about how do we do mission. <laughs> Um, but but actually that extremity, if you look through human history, has commonly been the way. Um, state after state finds itself in opposition to the idea of all of humanity under one family, under the Godhead and fatherhood of God. So it's constantly in that place of fighting. And people are all woven into the system. And we find, if you like, that the um, out of the very kind of other foundations which reflect the relationship of God with humanity, which is the family, then actually those things start to kind of get eroded because there's something antithetical to them um, in uh, in in the uh, in the philosophies um, that shape the shape bigger communities. <laughs> so I'm trying to do that in a way that's not sounding too obviously political. It, it is political, but I'm, uh, what I mean by that is I'm not saying left or right. I'm trying to say there's something of the spirit of the thing, um, and and Jesus recognizes it. And so even at the early stage, even when things are kind of small and actually they can feel quite good if I'm sharing for my neighbour and my neighbour loves it and glorifies the father. But eventually we get to a point where there is a conflict between um, the uh, the supremacy of, the, of God's perspective over the supremacy of the individual's perspective. And at that level, we find the kind of conflict hits. So anyway, hopefully that's not too um, too, too waffly and confusing. <laughs> Um, as we've kind of gone through uh, what we're, we're sharing. But does anyone want to ask anything or make a comment in? Or even, you, you know, I'm quite happy if you want to say, I think that's too complicated for a simpler approach. <laughs> uh, anything like, anyone want to kind of share anything into that context? No? Not, not on that level. I, I'm just thinking about um, Jesus modelling sort of shrewdness really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in his his dealings with people who were testing him um y- you know uh, he he picks the battles well doesn't he 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 um i, I was i was thinking of like the, the good samaritan coming out of um the lawyer trying to test him and yeah. and and Jesus not going on on points of the law but, but what yeah. it actually meant what, yeah um and also I, I often think of the of when Jesus was asked a question and about how, by what power he was doing things well, and yeah. he says Oh, well, I'll ask you a question. You know, yeah. you are to mine, and and then and then he's he's actually really authentic at the end because he says, "Then neither will I tell you." No, you know, he doesn't say, "I don't know." Um, yeah, no, and and you've got it because that's a really that's a really really good example of that being shrewd as a snake, 
and, and as, as straightforward as a dove, um, which is you're, you're asking for something, but you're, there's such a level of whatever. And, and we, need, we, we can only understand that if we look at it that way. OK, I can see what's going on. But now, actually, how do I deal with that? I can try and do it in the same way, respond to it like another snake, or I try and respond simply. And um, and uh, part of why for me this is a this kind of um, uh, you, you can feel the kind of I, I think this is important is because um, in the sort of developmental work I do on this, um, I, I've I've I really it's really been drilled home to me how the 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 modern psychological research has shown that um, moral hypocrisy is kind of almost the label you can give all human behavior. Um, it's, um, it's a kind of a weird, weird thing that um, it was, I often cite a piece of research of over 500 bits of separate independent research in a meta study that concluded that you, could, you should rebrand the, the, the science of social psychology as being the study of moral hypocrisy. That was the conclusion of a, a proper academic paper of a massive amount of data, which is so, so actually people will say the right things, but they don't necessarily do the right things. <laughs> um, and which why, so I'm therefore take the shrewd snakes thing i'm very suspicious when people say the right things <laughs> most loudly um, not because i want them to say the wrong things but because i know that saying the loud thing the right things loudly is actually often a sign of the fact that they're almost convincing the universe that that's how they really feel <laughs> and how they really behave now that doesn't mean to say that i therefore think you're always the opposite because that would be being sneaky again it's okay we'll, t we'll meet you where you are but I'm also being shrewd about this. I recognise that you may not be quite as w what you're declaring right now. Um, you know, I often use the illustration. It's very easy to talk about loving mankind. It's much harder to love the person who smells sitting on the train next to you, um, who's got needs. Um, you know that, and that that is a very real statement. I don't mean that just trivially. It is actually, it's it's trivial to talk about loving everybody. Um, it, it's much, much harder to go through life squashed up with others and clashing into them. Um, <laughs> and so so let's be let's be shrewd like the snakes and understand that. But let's be innocent like doves and try and meet people where they're at and try and treat them and present ourselves honestly with them. Um, but even then, recognising we can do that brilliantly, but there'll always be this spiritual conflict, which in the end can bring you into a place where you're going to find yourself... Um, uh, unloved at best and persecuted quite regularly <laughs> so. so anyone else want to comment or make a thought or was that all a little bit depressing for <laughs> oh, very wise words really um and uh, i like the the warning of not to reply to things trying to be too complicated yeah you know, try, you know trying to be trying to be wise but not i suppose come across as wise as it were yeah so the wisdom is yeah not to try and do it in the human level but human wisdom not to the fretting about it yeah. thank you neil well we, we've taken our time but um would anyone like to just pray for us at the end it feels good if we kind of you know finish with the with some uh, <laughs> anyone like to give offer up a kind of a really hopeful prayer for the rest of the week in these in these complicated times. <laughs> yeah, go on then. Um, Father, thank you for these words and um, just that injunction to be wise. And, um, and Father, would you pray for your wisdom and mm. understanding and uh, intuition to, uh, to read the times um, and to see where we can um, do our bit and where we can um, push back the... Uh, the force of evil and bring the light of the truth and the gospel and uh, your love and kindness um, into the world and to those around us, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Neil. Thank you for everyone for being here. Um, so I'll be here again next week. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure if we'll finish chapter 10 at that point, but it might be two more weeks, but we'll see where we get to. So I will say goodbye. I'll end the meeting. Okay, see you folks. Yeah, okay, Thanks Cheers. so much. Thank Thanks you. Bye. Bye.